Hey everyone, I've got another great tutorial for you. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a mist in a field of wildflowers. So if you want to see how I do it, keep on watching. To prepare my canvas for this particular uh, landscape, I'm going to be using a flat uh, wash brush and I'm going to get it wet and I'm basically going to put in a little bit of a sky up here. So I'm going to get just a little bit of the bright blue, pulling the paint from the side and not sticking it straight, straight in, helping to keep my brush nice and flat. And then I'm going to add some white to it. I'm going to use the end of it and just put in a little line there. And I'm going to fill in the rest of this using long brush strokes. Picking up a little bit of the bright blue and a little bit of the white and letting the mixing happen on the canvas. I'm going to do the tops and sides to my canvas as well. Right along the bottom, I'm going to throw in a little bit more pop of white to make it a little bit lighter down here at the bottom. more and I'm making sure that I continue to add a little bit of water to my paint mixture. Having the right uh, mixture of paint and water allows the brush to glide across nicely and leave no white canvas marks showing through. Now I'm going to rinse my brush off and I want to create a ground color across the bottom just to give me a base color to work with. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and a little bit of the green. And a touch of this black. And I'm going to come in and put a ground color and continually getting more color. And I'm not pre-mixing this color because I want there to be variations across the canvas. I don't want it to be exactly the same everywhere. Some places it might have a little bit more brown, some places it might have a little bit more green, some places it ha might have a little bit more black. So I'm just going to continue to cover the whole canvas in this way. Now keep in mind that this is going to be what is underneath all of our beautiful wildflowers and a field 
of wildflowers that we are going to create. And along the, the upper edge, this section, I'm going to start adding a little bit of white to it just to make it a little bit lighter and that will help us make it look like it's a little further away. touch of water on my brush and run this across. Now when I when you use the nice flat edge across the top you can get a nice clean line and we'll just kind of smooth that out a bit. So now that that's given us a nice little base coat I'm going to rinse my flat brush off and kind of set that aside for a moment. I'm going to come in and start doing a little bit of designing. I think I'm going to put a couple of trees that are way off in the distance. So I'm going to take my round brush and I'm going to roll it. Round brushes are best used if you roll it in the paint. So I'm going to roll it in the brown, roll it in a little touch of black. And I picked up a little tiny touch of blue. And I'm just going to come in and put a little trunk here. And maybe it'll go off like this. Maybe there'll be another one here. And I'll just put some of a trunk coming off to the side here. And then I'm going to fill it in. Now keep in mind, once we get the flowers and everything in, we're going to create a mist. So this is going to become much lighter once we do that. Now that I've put the trees in, I want to create uh, some leaves and I'm going to just pick up and use my blending brush for this using a 10 inch Filbert's brush. I'm going to pick up some of this green with a little touch of black and I'm just going to dab, just little dab marks and bring it out into the sky and create little sections of leaves. Even if there aren't, aren't little branches there, I'm going to give the illusion that they're there by creating the leaves. Some areas can be darker than others by adding a little bit more black. We'll hop one over and do the same thing to the other one. Bringing it out, creating branches.
So now we have a base for our trees. We're going to start coming in and putting in some wildflowers and grasses. We're going to do the grasses first. So I'm going to get my flat brush again. And what I want to do is use some apple tart green and some grass green. So I'm going to put it in here and put it in here. Give it a little brush. And I'm going to start right about mid-tone for the moment, just to check and see how that looks. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go back all the way back here and I'm just going to do some little tiny strokes. And I'm just holding the brush using the end of it, creating some little grass. The farther away it is, the shorter my little strokes are going to be. And when I come up for the second row, I'm not going to pass that first row that I did. I'm going to just continue that. And I can have some pops that are lighter than others. If I were doing this and I wanted to show a light source, I could um, have use the lighter green more and create a light source. Um, I'm not necessarily doing that in this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how we're going to create a mist over this field of wildflowers. Now the closer that I get, my strokes are getting longer now. And I'm going to turn my brush now and start coming like this to help me create a nice point on the end of the grasses. And I am touching my paint to the green to the grass green and the apple tart green. I'm coming up like this. And I can move in different directions to have the grass going in different ways. You don't want to just kind of go like that and have everything be the same and you want to keep your strokes really close together. Um, you have to have a little bit of patience and just think about what it will be when it's all done doing row after row.
want to make sure that you cover it really, really well. Now for me, I find going up is um, better because it leaves a nicer point at the tip. Some people like going down, but um, you have to just find what's comfortable for you if you want to try this technique. I am continually turning in different direction to keep it from being all like right in a row. If you get a little speck of dried up paint, you can always take the corner of your brush and pop it off.
me just slide this easel up a little bit. Now we've got a, a pretty good size base coat on there. I just want to get a little bit more of this apple tart green on my uh, plate here. And come in and look now to see where I might have holes, where I might want to put in a little bit more pop of the grasses. Keeping in mind it's going to be much more vivid and it should be much more brighter the closest it is to us, which is this foreground. It's going to have a, a lot more color. The further away something is, the less intensity and color it should be. We want to make this nice and thick. You can have some pops of that shadowy area underneath that ground color we put on coming through just don't want it to be spotty everywhere. Okay, I think I'm going to rinse my brush off now. So now we have this all ready and we're all ready to pop in some wildflowers. And you can do this a lot of different ways. Uh, what I'm going to show you is um, using a couple of different brushes. I'm going to use my um, blending brush. I'm also going to use my round brush. And I'm going to be using a hard, stiff brush, brush that has uh, stiff bristles on the end. So to start with, I'm going to use this brush. I'm going to come in with a little bit of white. I'm going to just touch this to here so that the ends have little touches of white. And just to test it out, I'm just going to lightly touch and I'm going to get way back in here. After some of the big colors, a lot of the paints come off of it in this first part, then I'm going to go back here because I don't want it to be as much on the brush. I'm going to get some more on and I'm not pushing it in really, really hard. I'm just getting those outer edges of the bristles with some paint on them. 
I don't want it to be completely saturated. I just want the end of those bristles. Have little clusters in an, in an area. Now I'm going to rinse this brush off. Now using my round brush, I'm going to roll my round brush in some yellow. Just going to come in and do little touches. Utilizing the point. And just touch. I could have little clusters of these in one little area. Maybe I'll put some over here. And if you wanted to pay attention to what these strokes of grass are doing, you can place these on top of like where an area looks like it might have a stem. And I'm just touching. I'm going to rinse this brush off. And using my blending brush, I'm going to get some of the bright blue with a little bit of the red and kind of have like a little purple color with a little more pop of blue in it. I'm not going to totally mix it up. Maybe I'll come in and again I'm just going to, to touch but a longer push like that. And maybe this will have a few different sides to the petals. So again, grab some blue, grab some red. So notice I'm, I'm starting in the center, pushing. And then I'm going off to either side and pushing. And I'm going to rinse that brush off. Now I'm going to go back to this brush now and I'm going to get uh, a little bit of red with 
a touch of yellow. Just pick a couple of areas to, to touch. So red, putting the red on first and the yellow on top with the thought in mind that the yellow is the highlighted color that will be on the top of the flower. Throw some way back in the distance now that I've used a lot of the color off of my brush because I don't want it to be too, too brilliant back there. Our mist is going to be coming over a lot of this, especially in the back, but we still want to know that there's some flowers back there. Put a little bit more paint on the brush this time to get those that are up close a little bit more brilliant. looking at the canvas now to see how it looks. Um, I want it to kind of look wild, not staged. And also paying attention to how my eye is going to travel through the painting. And it kind of does have some ups and downs, um, makes it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to rinse that brush off now. And just to give things a little bit more interest, I'm going to, this is dry now down here, so I'm gonna actually add a little bit more of a shadow. I'm gonna get some of this bright blue with a little touch of the black. Just come in and put a little bit more of a shadow on here. And I'll turn my brush occasionally so it comes up in between. come in now with a little bit of the green and a touch of black just for these areas up here throw in some some stems that might be coming up and just a few not for every single one just to give it a little bit more interest and now we're going to let this dry and we'll be back in a second for you, in a few minutes for me, and I'm going to show you how to create a mist. So I'll see you in a second. 
Now, most of my background is dry. I have a couple of little wet spots in here where the paint was thicker, but I'm not going to be putting any of this early morning mist or fog there. So I'm going to be using my flat brush. I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to be getting some white paint, pull it to the side of my plate, and thin it out a little bit. And it might take me a minute to get just the right amount on here. I'm just going to basically brush this on and I'm going to come right over these trees and if you get too much you just get more water and just kind of work it. I'm going to make this fog go clean across here. Get a little bit more. I can have it come down in little sections here and I'm just softly I'm not pushing hard on this maybe I'll bring a little in here and just kind of work it out let it come over more water on my brush, more paint, and I'll kind of decide where I think some of this fog is going to be. And see when I first put it on it's kind of it looks like it's just sitting on the top there. So it's taking it and working it across, and blending it out it's going to help create that misty feel to it. And turning my brush this way to get rid of harsh lines like right here. I'm just kind of blending that down. Get some more. just taking my time with it and figuring out where exactly it's going to be. kind of dry my brush off a little bit to kind of move some of this around a little bit more. Again, getting rid of some of my harsh lines here. do have a little time to, to work with it. Just keep moving it. Now I want to get a little bit more back in that background. Down low here. Again, going this way now. And I 
think I'm going to have a little bit more right in here. And I want to bring some here. I can come back up to here in a second and move some of that around. I'm just going to put some of this. Now see how I put a really large amount. But I'm going to use this to come all the way across. And I'm just moving it around, working it. And then I'm going to slowly lift up on it. Keeping in mind that it is a misty fog type atmosphere I'm trying to create. I can get a little bit more water on my brush to help me move it around a little bit more if I want. Some of these spots are still a little bit wet. So I want to be careful I don't get into that because then I'll wind up bringing that color clean across my canvas. Now this part is set just a little bit, just enough for me to lightly go over it with just the very edge of my brush. I think we need a little bit more right in the center here so I can put a larger amount right here and then get my brush wet and work it across. Hold my brush to the side and see how it just kind of moves it around so I have complete control of where I want it to go. have control down here. And again, I want a little bit more across the bottom here in the back. So I'm going to bring that over. I'm going to get my brush wet and I'm just going to slowly work this. Let me get this top edge just a little bit. I'm going to let that set a second so it starts to dry just enough that when I move it around, it will blend in nicely. I want to still be able to see these beautiful flowers underneath here. 
So in some areas, if I want a little tip of it to pop through, I can just wipe my brush off and come in and just move some of that out of the way and it'll clear so I can have a little pop of that flower coming through. I could do the same thing over here if I wanted just to have a little bit of that coming through. I'm not putting much pressure on my brush. Maybe I'll come down like this now. After a little bit of practice, this is really fun to do and it creates a nice atmosphere. taking a look to see where else I might want to add just a little bit more pop of fogginess. down in here. Just keep a little bit of the peaks of those. My water on my brush and blend this out. So we've kind of created a focal point right here because that's very much um, in focus, a little bit brighter than the rest of the painting. But you can certainly have a lot of fun with this and creating misty atmospheres in all kinds of different paintings. And I'm 
thinking maybe even a little bit lighter in that far background. Sometimes it takes me a little bit to really get a look at what I want to try to achieve. Just going to put a little bit more. We have little pockets of lighter. Maybe it'll blur out that transition between there and the sky so that I can't even really see where it ends. Not clearly, anyway. I'm going to let that set a second, give it one little final wipe right here, and, uh, and I think that this kind of shows you what I'm trying to demonstrate for you to show you what you're, you could try for yourself. I'm going to wipe my brush off on the paper towel. And I'm just going to lightly touch this. Bring it across like this. And like this. And there we have it. Well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did creating it for you. I hope that you all have a great day. Oh, and hey, if you want to see future tutorials, don't forget, you can subscribe. It's free. And if you hit that bell button down there, you'll get notified when I post new videos. So I hope you have a great day. May God bless you. And until I see you again, Happy painting!